Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with gameplay review number 13. Uh, I'm where I take your gameplay submitted to me via a YouTube comment section and I give you tips and tricks on how to perform better in online matchmaking. Today we're looking at a film submitted by Dar23Delta. He submitted self, several films to me, but unfortunately they haven't really gotten past the cut. So this is actually his second film submission and I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt in many ways mainly because there's a lot of players in this game loading out with the carbine. This player with the assault rifle doesn't end up playing for very much. There are two guests in this game and there's some lag more towards the beginning. So unfortunately um, he's not facing very good people for those of you who are more experienced players. But this game is on a new map Serenity forged on the forge world of Ravine. So I'm going to go over that map real briefly but he really wants to ask so in a nutshell, I want to know how to die less. And what I want to say to you, Dark 23 Delta, is that free-for-all is not a place to die less, but I can give you tips and tricks on how to do that in this free-for-all game specifically. So let's jump into it here. You're using the Battle Rifle, Plasma Pistol, Frag Grenades, Duster Pack, Mobility, and Ammo. We'll talk about that loadout a little later on. But off the start here, let's go over the map really quickly. You have the sniper that spawns kind of in the center portion of the map right here. Then you have over here on this side, past the central bridge, which connects the two bases, you have the shotgun that spawns over here. And um, over here in this corner, you have the sticky detonator. Again, pointing out kind of the foolishness of the enemy players. You have this guy literally sprinting by an AFK player without even realizing it and literally running in the opposite direction of the first available uh, waypoint to him, the sticky detonator that's directly behind him. Now, off the start here, Dar 23 Delta, I want to give you some tips on how to throw grenades better. You st you are already have thrown a grenade and it hasn't done anything. And um, while you do have some really interesting plays, especially good plays, especially later on the game, um, this may have been one of your first games because you throw a lot of grenades here that don't end up meaning anything. And you do a lot of this where you kind of run in straight at an enemy player. Now right here you kind of throw this grenade and this grenade is not going to explode behind this player's shield close to him because you threw it at the ground next to him. What you should have done is actually backed up here, specifically in this leftwards direction to try to get behind this wall, backed up here throwing the grenade at the floor right here so that the grenade bounces kind of over his head and behind the shield and explodes in midair. If you give the grenade an early bounce against a surface like this, specifically the floor directly in front and below you, it will explode earlier most of the time in midair and it's a much more uh, viable pre-made and is much more deadly. As it is there, here you because you don't go to the left here, you end up getting grenaded as this guy comes out of um, his hard light shield and you only get one kill before getting the assist on this guy before getting shotgunned. You don't need to clo close range it in this map if you don't have a close range weapon. Again you're throwing a grenade that doesn't do anything and a second grenade that doesn't do anything. You do end up picking up this kill across the map. But please keep in mind that this map specifically has a buttload of close range power weapons on it. Even in your ordnance there are during this game, there were two shotguns and two scatter shots on the map at one point. So please keep in mind, this is a really close range engagement. Now, it's really puzzling to me because you don't seem to know who you're going after. This guy gets sticky deaded, and thankfully, even though you're thrust packing towards this guy, which is a bad idea, he sticky deads over you and then ends up dying right here. But now you're in the middle of literally everyone on the map. You should have just kind of, st as soon as you saw that guy die, you shouldn't have thrust your pack towards him. You should have remained back. If you had remained back, you wouldn't have gotten swarmed like this and then have every, literally everyone around you. And it's surprising that you even survive for as long as you do. Now, there is some lag here. Again, I'm giving Dar 23 Delta the benefit of the doubt when it comes to this. But Dar, you don't pick up the sniper rifle, which is uh, below you right here. You could have picked it up and at least gotten one or two kills right here, just looking through here. And I know this map is not that good for sniping, but try to pick it up and use it. Uh, and again, if you don't feel comfortable with it, just pick it up so that the other players don't get it, okay? It's very important to keep that in mind. It's not that you have to get some epic no-scope or something. It's that other players don't get the sniper rifle, okay? Now you're kind of rushing in here again. You can't really choose a target. One of the reasons why you don't want to rush in is because you have to reload like you do. You do end up getting a kill on this guy, but unfortunately there is some lag, and then this guy just runs in and melees you. Um, this guy actually does that quite a few times during this game. Now you get your ordinance here, and this guy um, is a really great example of embarrassing you when you're using 
an incorrect aiming strategy, and I'm going to hit you really hard with this, um, especially at this point and a few other points during the game, but essentially you are whipping your scope from left to right instead of moving from left to right naturally to make your aim shots hit. All right, now this is not talking about during the first 20 to 30 percent of the engagement that you encounter here. Not, I'm going to slow this down, not these first few shots, okay? You're just trying to get level with him. But as you start missing right here, you start whipping your scope and missing so badly, it's not even funny. You want to jump on top of this rock. Don't jump straight up into the air like you did. You do this uh, later on in the film, and he it just ends up needling you, and you do this whip scope thing around with your reticle. All you need to do is go from left to right, and specifically, if you had gone left and behind this barrier and made him come to you, you likely would have gotten the kill and you would not have exploded, okay? This guy is a noob. He does not know what he's doing. I can promise you that. Now right here, it's good that you wait until you're alive to call down the scattershot ordinance. You grab that, but it's really puzzling why you don't kind of remain here and wait for this guy to, like... Because you see these guys on your radar, but you're all too eager to rush in with your scatter shot. You have a very big height advantage here. You need to make sure, when you see someone on your radar, make sure that you can't see them from your height advantage before you just rush in headlong like you're doing here. And this is puzzling to me because you end up sheathing your scat scatter shot or putting it away. And right here, you completely don't realize that this player did not fall off the map. And believe it or not, you don't realize that he's there. You end up just walking straight past him. And this guy behind you is a complete noob using a suppressor. And he doesn't even try to assassinate you. You actually end up killing him, which is pretty darn insane. But you switch to your battle rifle, which is probably a good idea in this position. But then it's puzzling to me because you pull out your scatter shot here. You throw the grenade, which is a good idea. Get the long range kill with kind of your, your grenade. Get the double kill, which is good. Get the triple kill, but you then forget that you have a scatter shot here. And why I'm saying that is because at this point, an uh, experienced player would have pulled out their scatter shot right here. Okay, they would not have tried to actually kill this player with a headshot. Now, that's this is debatable, but this is what I would have done. I would have immediately pulled out my scatter shot to guarantee that I got the overkill. If I didn't have a scatter shot or if I wasn't on a multi-kill, I may not have pulled out my scatter shot. But that being said, you kind of literally forget about your scatter shot. And I guess you're so in the moment. Oh my gosh, I almost got the overkill. Oh my gosh, I almost got it stolen. That you you crouch behind this rock but you're weak, man, and then you pop out again, and it just really doesn't make any sense because you could have stayed behind this rock with your scatter shot. This guy could have jumped down, and you could just rushed in and pwned him in the face, and then shot the overshield guy. You probably would have still died, but you could have taken out most of his overshield before he died, before before he killed you, should I say? So as it, as it is, you can see there's a lot of players engaging close range combat. Now, right here again, you're kind of rushing in, and you have this really bad tendency of missing your melees. When you're meleeing, you need to make sure that you're aiming slightly towards the person. This is one of the disadvantages of swinging your reticle from left to right. Because let, let's pretend that you're an enemy player and I'm standing in front of you, right? If I swing my reticle from left to right when I'm aiming, and then I happen to swing it too far to the left, and then I'm trying to melee, I'm going to melee an empty space right here. Right? This is why it's really crucial to be moving because when you're moving, you're going to be facing the player or you're going to be on the player most likely and you're going to be able to just move right into that melee and melee them. Boom! And then back right out to get the headshot if the guy hasn't died already. So it's really important to understand that there is a little bit of lag here. And it, it's just really important to get that um, in terms of all that. It's, it's just it's very, very crucial. Now right here, you throw a pulse grenade, and then you kind of just go off to the side here. I'm not sure exactly why you do this, maybe to try to get up here faster. You can jump on top of these rocks. You can jump on top of these rocks as well, and, and I just didn't know if you know that, but this is your first time playing on the map. I like how you single this guy out in the corner, and then you do land that melee. That's really good. There's no reason to pick up the carbine here. You're just wasting time at this point, but you do end up picking up a double kill with it. But you could have still got this double kill with the battle rifle as well. Now right here you do a really good job of throwing your grenade towards someone you know is going to come around the corner and you get hit markers on that person. All right, this is a really well thrown grenade. And this next grenade is also okay. All right, it um, gets some damage on this guy and you end up cleaning him up. But this guy throws a plasma and there's not much you can have done. He did the exact same thing back to you and naded you. Now what I want you to notice right here is how you just completely do not realize that there is a auto sentry in front of you. All right. 
this is really puzzling to me. I'm not sure how you could have missed this, all right, because it literally is all over your screen right as you spawn. This means that you have tunnel vision. You're focusing so much on the enemy players that you're missing key things around you, and this happens several times with your radar. You need to be aware of where you're going, and one of the ways you can do this is to not fire at people unless you know you can get the kill. This guy across the map, it's unlikely you're going to be able to get this kill. Now, thankfully he turns around and pursues you, and you do, but you end up pushing past his auto sentry, and his auto sentry is going to nail you multiple times in the back, and you're going to have to thrust your pack off. Thankfully this guy comes after you, and you do get the kill, but then you're in a really precarious situation where you gave up your top mid position. And it's really strange because you're not really familiar with how to approach camoed people, it feels like. You end up backing straight away, and unfortunately, this guy spawns literally right behind you in this corner, okay? Which is really bad. I know it's really unfortunate, but you don't notice this on your radar because you're so focused on the camo. What you should do here is toss a grenade right at this ramp to deter the camo guy from firing at you, then turn around and deal with this guy behind you. Now, moving forward, let's act like, okay, let's say I was in this situation, all right? right here all right right here let's say now i'm playing the game this is what i would have done at this exact moment okay instead of jumping straight up in the air as you're about to do and just getting annihilated by this guy because you're an easy target you uh, halo has a very lofty airy jump when you jump up in the air straight up like this it's very easy to look up ping you in the head you're dead all right especially in games like halo 2 and halo 3 but in Halo 4, if you jumped over to the left on top of this rock, and then as soon as you hit the rock, jumped up even farther and a more to the left, this guy would have would have had to done this as he's shooting. And there's it's very unlikely he would have been able to get the headshot very quickly. And as you land on the opposite side of this rock, whoever's up here on this ramp is not going to be able to see you as clearly. So it's a double whammy bonus, but you don't end up doing any of that, and you end up being taken out here. Now moving forward... You wait till you're safe to get this beam rifle, which is a good idea. You grab the beam rifle, but unfortunately, this is a p kind of position you are in the lead right now, which is important to realize. You're one kill ahead. You can look in the bottom right-hand corner and see that. You need to kind of play this passive, and what I mean by this is that you have 120% battery because you have ammo. You don't want to give this weapon away to guys. Specifically, you don't want to push into the center of the map, which are these kind of central areas, and that end up, ends up being exactly what you do. When you have a power weapon like this, try to stay on the sides, not so you can necessarily zoom, but so that you can bait people in with your radar, all right? Because you're playing a game with a lot of noobs in it, you can easily get melee rushed, all right? And you end up trying to kill this guy, but you're not aiming at people's heads here, okay? Specifically, what you're doing right now, you are aiming at the floor, even what your aim is right now. If you moved your aim over to the left, okay, you would still be aiming at his body, all right? Very important to realize, and this player, again, bum-rushed you earlier in the game. So it's really important to understand that your three missed shots here, especially because you're whipping the scope. You didn't have to whip the scope here. Just back up and let him come straight to you. I'm serious. Just back up, especially even around this, through this little barrier thing. You could have gone un under here, and he couldn't have meleeed you because you would have been behind this little grate. But you end up not doing that to your advantage. You end up freaking out, backing up to the right, and whip scoping three shots really unfortunately, and this guy easily cleans you up. Again, try to remain on the outer edges of the map if you have a really advanced power weapon like this. Now, right here, I do like what you do, where you look out here, you know, check your check out here, and nothing's here, all right? But unfortunately, there are some weapons down here, but we'll, we'll get to that a little later. Um, so you come around the corner right here, and I want to, again, point out, again, how this, on this map, this guy just literally spawned here, okay? And I'll show you guys this around the corner here. This guy literally just spawns here as he comes around the corner, which is really unfortunate. Um, so he tries to kind of shoot this guy, but then realizes this guy to the right on the radar. He gets kind of sticky dead and backs it with the thruster pack, which is a really good idea. Right here, I would have remained more passive. I would have gone all the way over here, let your shield regenerate, and then jumped out here and run around and flank from a different position. You're, you're remaining in the same stagnant general area. You want to keep moving, but you don't want to keep moving in the same direction that someone already knows you're there, okay? Because you didn't get very many shots on this player, um, this guy eventually ends up dying, but um, you end up going around here, and this is this is good, and you end up jumping off here, and you end up flanking around eventually. You could have done that a little earlier, but you miss all these weapons on the ground, and it's 
pretty clear to me that you jumped off right here and you saw these weapons. I mean, these weapons are clearly in your viewpoint. Now, I'm not saying all the other normal loadout weapons. I'm saying this scatter shot right here, which is a little hard to see, but this scatter shot also right here. You should be able to glance down and recognize, at least walk over this and see what's here, all right? This close range power weapons on this map are really, really important for winning the game. Right now, you're losing by one kill. I'm not sure why the announcer is not calling that out. Probably glitch in theater mode. You see this guy and you're putting shots into him, but I, what I want you to see right here is how your last shot right here right here okay this guy's going up a ramp you're going to have to aim far more up or not far more up but a little bit more up to hit his head okay his weapon can block part of your head shot all right so to hit that sliver of his head see how see how a lot of this is just kind of shoulder armor behind him to hit that sliver of his head you're going to need to aim upwards a little bit more it's really puzzling to me why you then move away and don't aren't looking straight at him but anyway you kind of push in here again, just straight up into players. You get end up being shotgunned with a scatter shot. You end up being taken out a lot with close, like the scatter shot and the shotgun, and you end up getting a lot of assists. Now you're four kills behind here, and this grenade could have been okay, but again, you just needed to throw it not necessarily at this at this floor, but throw it at the floor right before these guys. Don't throw it at the people because the grenade is just gonna bounce past. Look at where this grenade went, dude. You need this is this is a okay grenade except your placement. This is a perfect time to throw a grenade at the two players engaging each other, but you have to make your grenade land and specifically nade the floor a little earlier before you get to these guys. Again, you end up kind of just rushing straight at this guy. You get the headshot, but you're going to do the exact same kind of strategy with this next guy, and that's not going to work because this guy has a scatter shot and he's going to punish you for it. So it's very important to realize that. Now, right here, off your respawn, it's it's a little bit puzzling um, what you do here with the grenade, uh, but as it is, good job recognizing this and getting up in this high position like we were talking about earlier. But uh, that one shot wasn't necessary, but that's okay. You see this guy cross the map. Again, you're not going to get these kills from the position you're in. Notice the guy below you on your radar right now. You're really tunnel visioned. That the grenade you're about to throw right here is just kind of embarrassing. It's not going to do anything. And this guy runs all the way past you. And then you jump out with a ton of people on your radar. You kind of rush in with your thruster pack, expecting something to happen right here. You could have used your frag grenade and thrown it into this corner and j bounced it up. Okay. And, and maybe kill this guy or kill this guy as he was firing a little earlier if you had thrown the grenade. You kind of go in on this player, again, running straight at him to get the headshot. And then you kind of thrust your pack away, but you're in the middle of everything. You needed to kind of remain a little bit more passive here and use your grenades to your advantage, not throw them randomly across map. Only throw your grenades when you're seeing like clumps of people or you know someone is going to come around the radar right around the corner. Don't throw a grenade just because you see someone. Throw a grenade as a reaction to your radar or as a reaction to multiple fo opponents fighting in close quarters in an easily natable area. So, moving forward here, these shots in this guy are not necessary. You're not going to get kills like this. Now, this guy over here, um, it, it, you kind of get really confused by your radar here. You Now, this is where Astros help a lot because I would have immediately backed up here because I know this guy is a shotgun. But it's puzzling to me why you don't go uh, for the player over here in this area because you saw him on your radar. I would have kind of pursued that guy because he's alone and over here there's a lot of people. So as it is, you come around the corner and just get shotgunned in the face, which is unfortunate. There's not a whole lot you could have done about that. Maybe get a scatter shot or shotgun earlier on in the game and get some kills with that. But um, as it is, you're going to kind of push over here. And it's puzzling to me why you don't necessarily, um, y you're not, um, how, do you, how do you say it here? You're going straight back to where your death zone, where you died, which is an okay position, but oftentimes you want to change it up by going a different route. As it is, let's let's work with it for now. I'm not going to, um, you know, harp on you too much about it. You're running straight in, which is okay because you know that guy's weak. But this next guy um, has a shotgun, and you run you run in straight in again, and you can't be doing that in a game where you know people have such close range combat weapons. You do this a lot, where you're running straight in at the opponent. And I'm again, I'm really harping on you on this, um, and also you're you're moving from left to right because at the end of the game you do something really amazing and you do the route correctly, and it's about to come up here. 
in just a second. There's no reason to pull out the car pull up the carbine here. You see these guys going for the shotgun, which is a really good. You end up getting the assist here, so I was kind of worried. Um, but you end up actually uh, nading yourself here, unfortunately. You get the melee, but again, your grenade is way off throwing this at this rock. That, that really wasn't any necessary, but I want to really point out the strong, strong BR here that, that you have. And yes, it's on a person that's not moving, and I understand that. But I want to point out how different this BR is that you're about to pull off versus some of the previous BRs you've had where you run straight at them or whipped from left to right. Watch what you do here. Now, granted, this opponent is not moving, and I understand that. But I'm gonna sl I'm gonna kind of back up the film a little bit. I'm gonna show you what you do here. You get this. You run in and get this kill. And I'm gonna back up and and watch what your character does. Okay, this is what you need to be doing. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Even changing up your strafe a little bit. That was perfect. What you just did was absolutely perfect. And yes, the guy you're facing wasn't that great or whatever. But you end up doing that, and it's a really, really good job here. Really good grenade as you throw it at the floor. Notice how you threw that earlier at the floor, and it bounced right into his feet. Great job. That's what you should have done earlier. Now you end up, you end up tra turning around. Really good job. Really good awareness here. Again, you go to the left and then to the right. Okay. Do a perfect job here. Really good job. You end up reloading. A guy spawns here. Then you go left, and then you go right again and left and right and you get the double kill really good job I'll, I'll kind of slow this down again so you can see this all right so you go over here and you kind of throw this grenade and get this kill and it's just a simple movement from left to right man like it really even wasn't that much here but you're doing it you're this is what you need to be doing and it's not even that much of a move from left to right, but look how you're dodging his grenade, okay? You dodge his grenade, you get the double kill, now you're tied for lead, the one kill remaining in the game, you're tied for the lead, and you can, you know, you get some really good shots, moving from left to right to get on this player, you go around, and there you go, you kill this guy for the winning kill. That's what you need to be doing in games like this. Now there is one more final thing I wanted to go over with you, and that is, your free-for-all loadout. Now, this is the free-for-all loadout that you are loading out with currently. You have the battle rifle, plasma pistol, frag grenade, thirst pack, mobility, and ammo. And this is a great big team battle loadout specifically. But what I'd recommend you using is uh, changing your support upgrade to dexterity so you can reload faster, and your tactical package to shielding so you can regenerate your shields more quickly. The main reason for this is that mobility means you're going to run across the map infinitely, but maps are usually so small and free-for-all that there's no need for this. On top of that, grabbing extra ammo for a power weapon is nice, but in free-for-all, once again, you're likely to die very early on with it, as you saw with that beam rifle, even if you're a good player. So the ammo can be um, negligible compared to reloading quickly and getting more kills. Free-for-all is all about getting kills quickly. Thruster pack, fine. Frag grenade is fine, and I would also trade your plasma pistol for the bolt shot simply because there are many situations during that game when you could have gotten close range kills with it. But again, that's just my recommendation of what free for all class I would use. Um, this is actually the free for all class exactly that I would use for free for all in Halo 4. Now, for everyone else who's watching this video, um, thank you for watching. Thank you, Dar Delta, for submitting this gameplay review to me. He's also known as Darwincy Sheriff Fudden on YouTube, so if you guys see him in the comment section of this video, um, give him a shout, to let him know how he did, and just overall, thank you for watching this video. If you want to submit your own gameplay to me, go to the link in the description or click on the annotation in the top right hand corner right now. It'll take you to the video where you can submit your Halo 4 gameplays to me. Please watch that entire video so you can know how to submit your gameplays to me. And if you want to watch other gameplay reviews, click on the annotation in the top left hand corner right now to view the video playlist of all my gameplay reviews in one space. That being said, thank you for watching this gameplay review, and I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.